for two weeks. And the induction, it's a portable induction cooktop. So it comes in a bag and you can also with it, borrow an induction ready pot and pan. And so we have a little bit of a short wait list uh, the both induction cooktop kits are out with different residents right now. But if you're interested uh, in trying that out, you can go to our city's website and express interest in borrowing our new induction cooktop kits. So I wanted to mention a couple of things about the library. Um, if you're not aware, the San Mateo Public Library main branch is a LEED certified green building. And if you haven't been in our lobby, you can come in and see we have an interactive panel that um, talks about our solar power, our so solar panels on the roof, and our energy efficient building and the special heating and cooling systems. Um, so please come and see that. We have two electric vehicle charging stations in our um, garage underneath the library building. Um, and something that we have available for checkout are home energy and water saving toolkits. If you have a library card anywhere in the Peninsula Library System, you can come in and get one of these toolkits. It's like a little toolbox, and it has a variety of things where you can test your home energy consumption and some items that you can keep. Um, Compact light bulbs, outlet gaskets, weather stripping, low flow shower head. Those are some of the things in the toolkit that you can keep. Um, and finally, I wanted to mention um, the California State Library has made day use passes available for California State Parks. And we've had those for the last month or so. But this week we also added some quick pick um, state parks passes to our collection, which means that you can't put them on hold like you can with the others, but you can come in and ask at the desk. And if we have one available, you can take it right there. Um, they're good for three weeks um, to check out just like you do with a book or any other materials. And it allows you day use and parking at select California state parks. So please come in and check those out. So tonight's program, um, we are recording this program. Um, all of you are muted by default, but we are looking forward to your questions and we'll take those questions after the presenters have finished their presentation. And the way you can ask a question is to navigate to the bottom of your Zoom screen and you'll see a Q&A button. You can click that and type in your question and um, Andrea and I will read those questions to the presenters. Um, and please, if you can remember to use the Q&A instead of the chat, we're going to use the chat to um, share any links that are relevant. So for questions, Q&A. Um, and Nancy is commenting, Q&A is at the top of the screen. Okay, on mine, it's at the bottom, but I may have a different view than all of you do. So anyway, move your mouse around and you'll see the Q&A button and you can use that to, add, to ask questions. Um, so thanks for attending tonight, and I'd like to introduce our first presenter. He is Jeffrey Liang, and he is a program manager with Bay Ren. So Jeffrey, over to you. Thank you. Um, let me just share my screen. And while you're doing that, I'll also mention we will be posting PDFs of the presentation. So don't worry too much about jotting down every piece of information or every web link because these presentations will be posted after the presentation. Wonderful. And do I have the right view, uh, Andrea? Yes, it looks great. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, as Michelle mentioned, I am Jeffrey Liang. I run the um, single family program for Bay Ren. And because I know uh, for most people, people um, most people aren't familiar with uh, who Bay Ren is. So just wanted to set a little bit of context. Uh, Bay Ren stands for the Bay Area Regional Energy Network. And we are the nine counties, uh, as you can see here on this uh, map, the nine counties in the Bay Area. And we form this collaborative so that we can run energy efficiency programs. And so we, re uh, we receive state money for our, um, to, to do this. And so when you pay your PG&E bill, um, a portion of that goes uh, is for public goods charge. And that goes to the state, which then funds programs like this. And so uh, for the single family program that I 
that I uh, manage. We have been exist in existence since 2013, and we've helped over 10, uh, 12,000 homes upgrade uh, their energy performance and given out over $24 million in that time. So you may not have heard about us. We're kind of behind the scenes, but we are, you know, we have been around helping people make these improvements to their home for well, almost a, almost a decade now. So that's who we are. Um, let me move on. And so just going into the homes, you know, it's interesting. I actually, um, what, one of the stops in my career was I was a green building coordinator for San Mateo County um, quite a few years ago. And so, it, you know, as we start talking about homes, it's always interesting because, um, you know, I, I, having done this for many years, uh, one of the top questions I, I, or one of the top comments I always get is, Oh yes, I, I know I need to you know do solar and windows. And what's interesting is that's really what we find in what we call building science is it's actually one of the last things you should do. And what instead we should start thinking about is almost like a medical situation. And so my wife is a nurse at Stanford, and every now and then she'll come home and uh you know, kind of bent about her day. And sometimes it's about those patients who come in thinking that they already know what they need. And so they'll come in and say, you know, just give me this type of medicine and we'll, you know, I'll be on my way and, you know, like, I, you know, kind of know how to, how to get better. And so, you know, that's frustrating to her because the whole purpose of, you know, going to a doctor and is to kind of take this diagnosis approach, right? You go in, you look at each person, you know, you, you test, you know, run the tests on them. Um, and then based on that, you get a diagnosis. And then based on that diagnosis, you get, you know, a prescription or a plan to get better. Um, essentially, that's what we want people to do for their homes, because every home is different. Even homes on the same block can have very different issues, and thus very different ways that you want to address those issues. And so as we start looking at homes, I'm gonna talk about what are some of the major things to look at, but at the end of the day, again, you wanna go and find um, you know, people who can take a look at your individual home and give you a plan for what's the best way to fix it. So now having said that, I'm gonna go into a little bit more what generally we see. And so here on the left, or I think, should be on the left on your side, on your screens, it's kind of a breakdown of energy use. And this is you know, kind of nationwide, but um, obviously things are different based on you know, local conditions, you know, whether your house even has cooling, but at, as a very general sense, you can kind of see what are the major pieces of that pie. Um, you know, 29% heating, 17% uh, cooling, you know, don't know if you have cooling, um, you know, obviously different parts of San Mateo, but, um, you know, kind of, let's just call that space conditioning. Um, water heating, um, appliances, you know, these are, as we look to address the home and our energy use, these are the good places to start because they often take up a lot of the bill. And maybe if they don't, that might mean that sometimes there's comfort issues that, you know, that you may need to deal with. The other major kind of thing to consider is also how our bills are, are um, structured. And so um, I think, you know, some people may have heard, but, uh, you know, for, you know, recently, probably in the last couple of years, people have been defaulted to this time of use rate. And so now, uh, because we get so much solar uh, in sometimes, the, um, you know, in, certain seasons and at certain times of the day, uh, when we use our energy is becoming almost as important as how much we use. And so what we see is this four to nine time period is when we, uh, you know, people are coming home, you know, the sun has generally started to go down or we're not getting as much uh, production from the solar panels. And so we have this time where, you know, if, um, it gets more expensive because we need to use more of like the gas power plants to, to um, kind of fulfill the demand there. 
And so because of that, we're starting to, you know, the, the rates are structured so that we are starting to see that that four to nine time period is more expensive. And so as we start to look at how to reduce our energy bills, you know, you also want to take a look at what are the things that you turn on at that time of day and what are ways that perhaps you can shift that use to other times of the day. So, you know, again, going back, you know, we want to look at what are the major things that generally we find in homes that cause, you know, high energy bills. And again, like I said, most people, when they talk to me, they say, oh, I know I need to do solar or I need to do windows. And what we find is in, you know, in kind of like the building science community over, you know, hundreds that hundreds of thousands of millions of homes that they uh, that people have looked at, there are three major things that we find are kind of the major culprits of high energy bills or just uncomfortable homes. So number one is air leakage. The really surprising, you know, kind of um, image I almost want you to have in your head is if you added up all the leaks in your home, they would be the size in the average home. It would be the size of a hula hoop. So think about that as you're stirring, you know, especially in the winter, as you're heating that, um, you know, heating your home, all that air that you've heated is essentially, you know, leaving the house if, as if you had a, a huge hole in your home. Um, where are these holes? It's all these uh, little places where, you know, you, you don't think about. Um, for example, one of them is recess lights. If you actually hold an infrared camera up to the ceiling, um, on a on a winter day, or even you know, summer day when um, when there's a lot of heat transfer, it almost looks like Swiss cheese because you'll see like you know the hot spots as red and then the colder spots as uh, as blue, and because a lot of these are not insulated, that heat is just going right up into the attic in the in the winter and is actually coming down in the summer. So on a day like yesterday when it was really hot. Um, a lot of people, they probably don't realize that that heat is coming through those recessed lights and into the rest of the house. That's why the second floor, you know, for, for people who have second floors, a lot of times they say, you know, I can't sleep in the, in the second floor during the summer because all, it's so much hotter than the rest of the house. So that's one culprit. Um, other places you can look is like if you hold your hand next to your uh, electric outlets that are you know, kind of on the exterior walls. A lot of times you will feel like a literal breeze coming through. Um, I've, I've literally done this where, you know, people can test how much a house leaks by blowing air into the house and seeing how fast it kind of, the air has to, you know, kind of balance. And when you do that, you can hold your hand next to that um, uh, electric outlet and feel that, you know, breeze coming in, in or out of the house. Um, so a lot, you know, you, you can take a look at this presentation afterward. I, I'll PDF it and or, and we'll send it out. We can send it out to you. But these are all the places that you should be looking, first of all, because you want to reduce before reduce that waste before you do anything else. Second one is insulation. Um, I mean, yeah, insulation really helps the, the transfer of energy. So uh, one story that I have is, um, you know, during the pandemic, uh, we actually used to live in an apartment that was had no insulation. It was horribly not, not great from energy perspective. And on the uh, my son was born in September of 2020, and we were it was 95 degrees in our apartment because of all these issues that you know we we discuss here. And so we actually went to look in an open house and to the house that I am currently in and it was 80 degrees with no AC. And of course, I, being who I am, had to go up in the attic and see that, yes, we actually had insulation. And that was the reason why all that, you know, it was really hot in the attic, but that insulation kept all that hot air from getting into the rest of the house. And so when we see things like this, we know that it's not working because the insulation needs to kind of fill up this whole stud cavity. Um, same here, we're not, you know, it's not being filled up. Um, and so because of that, that air just kind of seeps right into the house or in the winter, it seeps right out of the house. So, you know, I tell people that 
you know, when you don't have the insulation, you're really making like, um, you're making the attic sometimes one of the most comfortable places in the home because that's where the heat is going to, you know, escape during this uh, winter. Um, and this third one I wanted to mention is leaky ducts. So one surprising thing is, you know, uh, the average duct system in the US leaks 30%. So think about it. If you had plumbing that was leaking 30%, you would want to do something about it. You would know because everything was getting wet. But because these often go through our crawl spaces in our attic, we, we don't have as much of an idea. And then again, I said 30% is average, which means that we have people who are like 10%, but then we probably have people that have 70% or people who have 100% leakage, as in this um, photo here. Um, I have a very, very corny energy joke, which is, you know, duct tape is good for everything but sealing ducts. And that's because, and by California code, you actually can't use duct tape to seal ducts because this is what happens. It, as soon as it gets hot and cold, it starts to fail. And so we get situations like this. Um, we get situations like this here on the left. Um, and then one other thing to note is if you ever see like, you know, sometimes people have insulation wrapped around their ducts and you see this dark um, area, that means uh, air is getting sucked into the duct. So when I say 30% is, you know, leakage, if it's getting leaked into the attic, that means it needs to, that air needs to be made up somewhere. And so a lot of times this yellow insulation essentially acts like a filter for the ducts. And that's not what it's meant to do. Um, so, you know, imagine all that air getting sucked into the rest of your duct system and being distributed throughout the house. And my theory, once people, why people get sick or have colds in the winter is because they're starting to turn on their heating system for the first time, probably in a few, few weeks or months. And all that dust is now getting distributed throughout the house. So, you know, one thing to check, <laughs> if you have the chance to go into your attic or look at through your crawl space and see this, um, you know, it's not the, the most sexy thing to look at, but it's, you know, really important. Um, and then, so once you've addressed it, you know, these leaks and, you know, kind of, we almost talk about like, you wouldn't buy a new car and not pump up the tires, right? So it's like, you're not getting the full efficiency out of the system, even if you have a great engine. Um, same with the house, you know, once you fixed all these distribution issues, then you start looking at your water heaters and your furnaces um, to make sure that, you know, you have the most efficient system, uh, you, you know, up the efficiency of the system. So, you know, start replacing things like this and I'll, I think in the future slide, we'll see another one where I'll kind of show you some of the things to look out for. Um, but that, of course, our program gives rebates for these items, water heaters, furnaces. So these are literally um, friends of mine who <laughs> their uh, furnaces and wall, uh, water heaters. Um, so one thing to note as you start, you know, looking at water heaters and furnaces is, um, you know, our number one priority, even above energy, is health and safety. And unfortunately, with a lot of these old systems, they, you know, especially, you know, if you have a gas system, they combust in, you know, within your home, and then hopefully they're getting vented out. But one of the things you want to check is that that's actually happening, because if you have a lot of things running at the same time, sometimes that exhaust, that's, you know, you kind of, should be venting out of the home, gets sucked back into the home and you know, as backdrafting. And so with our program and our contractors that we use, that we you know, uh, participate in this program, they always have to do this um, safety check. And this, that's what they're doing here with this water heater, checking to make sure that gas is not coming back out. And unfortunately, we see it fairly often. Um, same thing here. Um, this contractor here is checking all the joints where you know, potentially that could get, you know, gas could leak into the house. And especially because, you know, oftentimes this, these appliances are right next to our duct system. And if our duct systems are 30% leaky or even more, you know, all that air can get sucked into the house. And so this is like carbon monoxide, NOx gases, you know, all the bad things that you don't want to be breathing in. And so, you know, number one important thing as you make these improvements, make sure 
whoever is doing this work understands how to check for combustion set, uh, safety. And all this to say, these are my kids. Um, you know, I, I talk about this as a father. Um, they're a little older now, they're five and two. Um, and I don't often just read off my slides, but in this case, I will. Um, studies of comprehensive energy, health, and safety retrofit programs found that for children with asthma, hospital admissions fell by nearly 85% and emergency visits by 68% a year after the upgrade. You know, this is why I, you know, whenever I'm talking to my friends with kids, this is where I, I go to immediately. Um, not, and of course, want to address the comfort issues, but we want to make sure that we're not bringing in asthmogens into our house because, you know, our kids breathe a lot faster and they're closer to the ground um, and more susceptible. So I want to make sure that, you know, as we are trying to address, you know, so many people have asthma that we're addressing these issues within the home. Uh, so now we have solutions. I'm not going to go too um, too detailed into this. Um, you know, we're trying to move people from you know, from gas to electric, um, especially as our grid gets cleaner and cleaner. That helps you know our our greenhouse gas emissions, but also you know, of course our indoor air quality. Um, so this is a heat pump system where you know you. Uh, it's actually 200 to 300 percent efficient because it moves heat from one place to another. It's not generating heat, and so you know this is kind of the wave of the future. You, you may have heard some places um, like Berkeley or San Francisco or San Jose have gas bands, natural gas bands, and that's because um, you know because of those indoor air quality issues, but also because these are so much more um, efficient that it's almost a no-brainer, especially for new construction, to move to these systems. And they will save you uh, money too. Um, you know, the equivalent for water heaters is a heat pump water heater. Essentially, this module on top of the tank, um, you know, takes the hot uh, air, uh, you know, the heat from the air surrounding it, and puts it into the water. And so, it doesn't actually even need to be that hot. It can work perfectly fine in like forty degree weather. Um, it just needs enough air to circulate. Um, and it's basically the same technology that you have in your refrigerator. It you know, just moves heat in and out. So we'll talk about rebates that we have for this. Uh, I also wanted to go quickly mention cooking. Um, you know, as you can see here, uh, when, when our contractors go look at gas stoves, they have to do this um, in, uh, check for combustion safety. And unfortunately, you know, um, a lot of times what we generate while we're, uh, the amount of pollution we generate while we're cooking would exceed outdoor air quality um, guidelines. Um, and we do that almost every day in our home. Um, so number one thing, make sure you turn on your vents because even if you switch to induction, you're still gonna have some particulates, but you know to uh, uh, eliminate things like carbon monoxide and nitrous oxides and formaldehyde, it's best to uh, switch to an electric uh, and induction actually cooks so much faster than uh, gas. I was actually just making dinner right before this and I, I haven't been able to switch. I'm in that process, but I, I have two little uh, induction hobs similar to the ones that San Mateo has to loan and they cook so much faster. They're more precise. So from a cooking perspective, it's actually a better product, but I can talk about that all day. Um, but uh, feel free to, you know, take it, you know, try it out from the, uh, the loaner program. And so here are kind of all the electrification measures. I didn't mention heat pump clothes dryers, but that's another item that we give incentives for because switching from gas to electric. So with our program, you can get to, you know, with our rebates, you can get help to make all those improvements. Um, so going back, you know, how, what do you do first? Um, one, one, uh, sister program that I just want to quickly mention is the home energy score. And so what basically this does is give you kind of like a miles per gallon sticker for a home. And so you get a one to 10 score that kind of shows how you rate compared to uh, homes in your area and your vintage, and you will get recommendations. And in fact, if you do, you can get an electrification checklist and they will give you electrification recommendations. So that's one great way to get started. Um, you'll see here, kind of here's a sample of the report that you would get. So you can prioritize what measures you wanna do. So once, you, and with the $200 rebate, um, 
most people will be able to, you know, that will cover most, if not all, the costs for many people. Uh, for a small house like I have, um, my assessor didn't even charge me because that rebate covered his time. So once you know, um, then you can just start to make those changes. And I'm not going to spend too much. I'm not going to go measure by measure. But as you can see, you can get um, thousand dollars for attic insulation. You can get um, thousand dollars for heat pump water heaters. You can, you know, combine all these together, and you can get uh, up to five thousand dollars in rebates. So, you know, uh, feel free to give our advisors. Uh, I think I have it here on the bottom. Um, a call, and they can walk you through this whole process. What's key to this whole process, though, is our participating contractors. As I alluded to, you know, we want to make sure they're vetted, that they pull permits, that they um, do the, all that combustion safety check, um, and that we have a way to kind of do QA, QC on them. So the basically the entree into this program is find a contractor, uh, participating contractor, and they will fill out your paperwork. They'll walk you through the whole process. And if you need help finding a participating contractor, call our energy advisors and they will, you know, can help you identify who, who in your area um, would be a good fit for you. Um, yeah, that, there's the energy advisor. So that's number 866-878-6008. And if you go to our website, you can even find a place where you can um, set up your own appointment. Um, you know, you can choose a time in our in their calendar. And again, these guys are third party um, experts, so they're not there to you know sway you from from one you know to one contractor or another. They're there to you know review your bids, walk you through that whole process, and also identify other complementary programs that can you can take advantage of. And so I think that's actually a great segue because um, you know one of some of the complementary programs that you can get directed to are with PCE Peninsula Clean Energy, and Vanessa will be here to uh, talk about the PCE program. So let me stop sharing and pass it over to Vanessa, and I will take a look at the Q and A um, and um, come back at the end to answer any questions. Take it away, Vanessa. Great. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for that introduction and great overview about the importance of efficiency, as well as previewing the importance of home electrification. I'm really excited to be here today. My name is Vanessa Shin, and I am the Community Outreach Associate with Peninsula Clean Energy. And I just wanted to thank all of you for being here today. Really excited to see that you're interested in the topic. Excited to share how Peninsula Clean Energy can support you. And again, thank you to the City of San Mateo and San Mateo Library for inviting us and hosting this opportunity to all connect. So to start us off today, I'd like to give us a short virtual tour and really an opportunity to peer into one of our award-winning electric homes. And so I'm gonna play this quick one minute video featuring Kathleen and Andy Goforth from San, uh, from San Carlos. And they recently received recognition in our all electric leadership awards program. Hi, I'm Andy. And I'm Kathy Goforth. And we'd like to welcome you to our all electric home. So one of the first things that Bayron recommended that we do was upgrade the insulation and we had cellulose insulation blown in. So this is probably my favorite of the new things that we've got. This is our induction stove. What I like the most about this is this is so incredibly easy to clean up. By replacing the gas furnace with a heat pump, we also got air conditioning and we wanted to get one that had a really good filter so that we would have better air quality in the house. After we replaced the water heater, we saw our energy bill go down because we weren't using gas to heat water. I think some people, when they hear about giving up their gas, they think of making some kind of a sacrifice. And we're Liberation. Actually... We could get a... <laughs> yeah, we feel more like it's a liberation. It's a liberation. If you need to upgrade anything on your house, really seriously consider electrification. 
Right. Well, I hope that you found that video to be inspiring as well. I really love this video because it the speakers talk about some of the really practical benefits of electrifying their home. Like for example, calling up the heat pumps and talking about how it has improved their home comfort because they have AC now or talking about their induction cooktop and how it's so much easier to clean and just more convenient. So if you wanna learn more about some of our award-winning electric homes, you can find that on our website. And again, we'll, I'll throw some of these links in the chat after my presentation and it'll be also available in the slides. Hi, I'm in. Great, well, so now I'd like to take a step back and introduce Peninsula Clean Energy. We were launched in 2016, and our vision really is to help build a sustainable world with clean energy for everyone. And so our service, clean electricity, is an automatic benefit of living in San Mateo County. And so we are a public agency that was created to help fight climate change through clean energy. And there was a lot of support to create Peninsula Clean Energy back in 2016. In fact, it was authorized unanimously by all of the city council members in each of the cities, as well as the San Mateo County Board of Supervisors. And they all unanimously voted to create Peninsula Clean Energy. And so again, as a local public agency, that means that we are not for profit and we're community led. And so we are governed by a board of directors that includes representatives from San Mateo, your representatives are Mayor Rick Bonilla as our director, as well as council member Joe Gothos, Gothos as the alternate director. And so to explain a little bit more about Peninsula Clean Energy and how our service works, we have this handy diagram here on the slide. And so this really shows how Peninsula Clean Energy works with PG&E to get clean energy to your house. And so you'll see on the slide, Peninsula Clean Energy operates on the left side of the diagram in electricity generation. And so what that is, is that we work behind the scenes to purchase electricity that is 100% clean, coming from sources like large wind turbines or big solar farms. And so we purchase that clean electricity on behalf of our customers, which includes residents, businesses, schools, as well as local government. And we are also able to do that and pass a little bit of savings on to our customers. And so our rates for electricity generation are 5% less than what PG&E would have charged you, in addition to also being cleaner. And so PG&E continues to own and operate the power lines and other infrastructure that brings this electricity to you. And so that's why you'll continue to receive the bill from PG&E, and then you'll see Peninsula Clean Energy also on that bill. And so we're really excited to work and help bring significant benefits to the community. And so I just mentioned that we have a 5% discount on electricity generation compared to what PG&E would have charged you. And for the average customer that comes out to just a few extra dollars of savings every month. But then when you compare and look at all of our customers, we've calculated that we've saved our customers over $104 million since 2016, which is when we started service. And so that's really awesome, really significant savings that can stay in the community. And I also mentioned that our mission is to help address climate change. And so working with our communities and customers, we've been able to contribute to a 96% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from electricity. So also really significant contributions to climate action locally and reducing greenhouse gas emissions from electricity. And we wanna help do more. And so we are partnering with our communities to go uh, completely greenhouse gas free. It's our goal to help support our communities with becoming 
getting off of fossil fuels by 2035, which is very ambitious. And so we had just talked about, and Jeffrey had hinted this and introduced this idea in his presentation as well. But now that our community has such a clean source of energy through electricity, we are now working with our community to power our lives with this clean energy. And so that mainly includes in buildings as well as in transportation. So for example, replacing appliances that run on fossil fuels with ones that use electricity, as well as switching from cars that are fueled by gas to ones that are run on electricity. And so we have a number of programs to help support our community with that transition. Just wanted to dive a little bit more into what our missions look like locally. And so here on the slide is a chart showing our greenhouse gas inventory from 2019. And what this is, is essentially a way to evaluate the greenhouse gas emissions that are produced locally and attribute them to different sectors. And so you'll see that a big portion of our local greenhouse gas emissions can be attributed to transportation and using methane gas or natural gas in buildings. And so that's why we really see our role and are very excited to help transition our community from using fossil fuels to using clean energy. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we have a number of different programs and rebates to support our community with this. I'll be going into most of these programs in greater detail, particularly the ones relating to homes and buildings in just a few slides. But I also wanted to highlight quickly that we do have incentives for used electric vehicles, as well as renting and trying out an electric vehicle. So if that is also of interest to you, I encourage you to check out our website to find more information. And so the first program that I'd like to highlight for you all today is our heat pump water heater rebate. And so most people are surprised to find out that the appliance that creates the most greenhouse gas emissions in typical homes is often the water heater. And so if you do have a water heater that is a little bit old, you know, nearing maybe 10, 10 years or older, it's a great time to start thinking about what to do when that water heater eventually goes out. And so we're currently partnering with BayRent to offer $2,000 or more in rebates to replace a gas water heater with a water heater that is electric and more efficient called a heat pump water heater. And we also offer additional rebates for income qualified customers as well as customers who will also need to upgrade their electrical panel. So I wanted to let you know that those extra incentives are also available. We also have a program to help support rooftop solar and battery systems on your home. And so this is a partnership Peninsula Clean Energy has with Sunrun and we provide, and through this agreement, they will provide up to $500 in incentives when you lease a solar and storage system on your home. And so the benefits of solar and storage is that you can both generate electricity from your rooftop solar when the sun is out, but with the battery system, you can also store that extra energy and use it when you need to. And so that has the added benefit of boosting your resilience and can help you maintain power during power outages. And I'll also note that the way that these agreements are formed is to help make it more affordable. And so in many cases, you won't need to put any money down to be able to lease the system. And then finally, I wanted to highlight our home upgrade program. And so this is a program for income qualifying homeowners. And what it offers is free home improvements, such as basic home repairs, or if you need to switch out and upgrade to an electric appliance, you can do that through this program as well. And so the income cap for a single person household 
is just over $100,000. And the income cap does increase if you have more members in your household. So if this is a program that could benefit you or someone else you know, we encourage you to check it out on our website and apply. And then finally, I want to highlight and share an upcoming program that will be launching very soon, we hope in the summer of this year. And this program can help you finance any home upgrades and improvements. So for example, if you wanna switch out an appliance to an electric appliance, you can receive a 0% interest loan up to $10,000, which you would then pay back on your energy bill. And so this is through our on-bill financing program, which will be launching later this year. And with that, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you all for your attention today and participation. And I look forward to answering any questions you may have. Thanks to all our presenters. And um, it looks like um, Jeffrey and Alero, you guys have been answering some of the questions that have been coming in. So that's great, thank you for that. And please, anyone else, if you have any questions for our presenters, feel free to type them in the Q&A box and we'll read them out and get them answered. Yeah, thank you to our speakers who've been really active in um, answering our questions. I'm trying to think maybe it would be worth it to review some of the responses, Jeffrey, that you provided to some of our audience members. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, do you want to <laughs> choose a few? Um, trying to see what would be most applicable uh, to everyone. I, yeah, maybe I, I feel like I see a, a good number of questions about uh, replacement of uh, the gas furnace. So maybe you could expand on uh, the rebate available for uh, elect going electric. Yes. So for our program, we have $1,000 to switch from a gas furnace to um, a heat pump. So, you know, you know, kind of the two major systems are, you know, have a central furnace and that, you know, provides you know, heat to the whole house. And so you could switch um, directly to a central heat pump. It's basically a one for one replacement. Uh, I will say, unfortunately, we're working through this, I will say. Um, but uh, for currently, we're only able to give rebates for people who switch out both their um, both their furnace and air conditioning. And that's because the state doesn't want, you know, if you didn't have air conditioning, it could potentially increase your bill because you, you're, you're starting to use air conditioning. Um, and so we are petitioning the state to allow for um, people to switch even if they didn't have a uh, air conditioning just because heat pumps are so efficient that even adding a little bit of load should still be more should still be better than going with the old gas furnaces I mean we've seen people you know have those 50 percent really old like you know uh, older than the people who who live in it um, so we we you know we want to make that change um, if you have just like you know, what we call floor furnaces or wall furnaces, you can switch those to what are called ductless mini splits. And so they're kind of like these point sources, you know, you just put them up on the wall and they, you know, they hook out to a condenser outside and they provide both heating and cooling in the home. And for that particular technology, it doesn't matter if you didn't have AC. So I know that's a little complicated again, you know, feel free to call our advisors and see what situation you fall into. Um, but that, you know, uh, we give $1,000 for both of those, um, those uh, um, technologies. And um, I, they, they work, I, I will say my family's from Taiwan, you see them all the way everywhere in Taiwan, because it, that's just how everyone heats and cools their home. Wonderful. Uh, I see a question like Vanessa, you might be answering, but I'll I'll go ahead and read it out loud. Uh, this question is from Nancy. I just had an electrical panel installed at my house, um, 
And is there a time limit to submit for the rebate for the electric panel upgrade? Yes, I was just typing out an answer, but happy to answer live. So thanks so much, Nancy, for your question. And so it sounds like your question is, if you've recently, you recently installed an electric panel and you're wondering if the home upgrade program would be able to cover those costs. And so I'll put the link to the program in the answer, but I'm not aware of it you know, retroactively covering any home improvements. The process is typically you sign up, pre-apply on our website, and then a contractor and, and um, energy advisor will come to your home and, and do an assessment and, and see what kinds of improvements they can help make that are qualified as part of the program. And so I, yeah, will send you the link to that program and encourage you to reach out. Maybe there's some additional help that you would be eligible for receiving, but I'm not aware that you'd be able to have something you've already done covered by the program. Yeah, Great, and I'll also um, leave my contact information if you want to follow up with me. Thanks. We have a question from Eric, and um, I'm sure others might have this question as well. And I see, Alero, that you're typing an answer. Is there an estimate for how much some of these upgrades cost after the rebate supply? Yeah, we, we do have some um, kind of just general numbers. Um, I hesitate to you know, say it because then people kind of say, oh, it should cost 5,000 or 6,000. Uh, it really does depend on your home. And one of the things I also wanted to kind of, I forgot to mention, and I think came up in some of these questions is, you know, especially if, you, if you're trying to get to solar and go, go like all electric, you know, what you wanna do is do all these efficiencies and kind of figure out how much you actually need before you put your solar on. Um, and so, uh, you know, because let's say if it's not insulated, if the ducts are leaky, you know, if you can reduce all those, you may be able to get a lot smaller system than you than you otherwise would have thought because unfortunately the average contractor kind of does like this rule of thumb oh you have this many before you probably need this amount but what we're finding is most contractors will oversize the system by you know two maybe sometimes even three times because they don't want people to come back and you know have to go back and repair it and so what happens is then you get the system cycling on and off uh, i don't know if I've lived in homes like this where, you know, the heat or heating comes on, blows full blast for like five minutes and then it shuts off and then all the air just leaks out and then that comes back and you get this constant cycling. So when you, when it's working right, it's your system is sized properly to the ducts and the needs of the house. And that's one way to reduce the cost. Um, and then if you have solar, then now you you know, you're essentially getting that heating and cooling for free because you're you know pulling it from you know your solar generation rather than sending it back to PG&E. So there's a lot of um, nuances to it. Um, feel again, I, I know I hate to you know kind of deflect the question, but uh, talk to the advisors. They can give you better sense of um, how much it is for your particular area because sometimes. Um, you know, certain areas are just more expensive because uh, you know land is more expensive, and you know contractors can't travel as far. Um, sometimes it's based on time of year, um, because you know right now we're unfortunately in the supply. We have some supply chain issues. So really, um, talk to your advisor. They can give you a snapshot as to what's relevant for you in your time and place. Great, thanks. Um, we had another question um, that Vanessa, you just answered, and maybe you'd like to discuss that a little bit. The question was, these are many good, many good options for homeowners. What benefits are available for multifamily property owners or renters? 
Yeah, that's a really great question. In the q and I provided some information about some technical, free technical assistance that Peninsula Clean Energy offers to property owners and building owners of multifamily. And so we provide technical assistance for all electric buildings, as well as incentives and assistance with electric vehicle char charging infrastructure as well. Are there any, Jeffrey or Laird, do you want to chime in? I can talk, uh, I, oh, Alero can too, um, but uh, Bay Run also has a multifamily program. It's called Bay Area Multifamily Building Enhancements Program. And you can go to Bay Run. I, it is most, more for the property owners to make the improvements because um, it's meant for the whole building. And generally it's five units or above. Um, for individual units, it's kind of, uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, you can use the Home Plus rebates. Um, so if you want to switch out like, you know, induction, you know, switch gas stove out for induction, um, you could use the Home Plus rebates for that. Um, obviously, you obviously need to coordinate with a property owner, um, but uh, yeah, uh, I think that, yeah. Great, and I wanna also, mention the program that uh, Michelle introduced at the beginning of our presentation that might be a good resource to renter since uh, Vanessa and Jeffrey highlighted some programs that are more targeted, as I mentioned, towards the property owner. Um, but if you are looking for, you know, low cost things that you can do inside your home and you're a renter, uh, checking out the home and energy, home energy um, and water toolkit can help identify some ways to save energy and water in your home. And you can check out that toolkit at the San Mateo Main Law Library. Yeah, I will also say there's a lot of, uh, I think someone alluded to, you know, kind of making your, your fixture like lights and being uh, more efficient. And so one kind of plug for another program is the, I think it's called Home Intel or Home Energy Analyzer. Um, it's a program from pg e where you can put in your account uh, and they will, you know, kind of analyze your bill, kind of tell you what's going to heating, what's going to cooling, what's going to plug loads, what's always on. And then that hopefully can help you identify, oh, I can switch these you know, lights out. I can put this on the smart strip. Um, and we actually, Bayron also offers an energy efficiency kit. So if you go in, you know, fill out information, we will send you a, a kit up to 70, worth up to $70 to, you know, kind of put in some of these simple items in your home, whether you rent or own. Great. We have a question from Mel. He says, I recently heard a presentation from Harvest Thermal, who combines space and hot water heating with one heat pump. Is this a standard practice? And are there any other companies taking this approach? Um, there, I know there's one other one, um, but it's honestly, it's very exciting for us. Um, I, I've seen, you know, kind of heard the presentation. I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, it's not standard practice yet, but um, I, I if I remember correctly, is there, I think PCE may even be working with Harvest Thermal on a uh, pilot project. Maybe Vanessa can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we do currently have a pilot program going on with Harvest Thermal in which we're partnered with some homeowners to install that system in their home. So I'm gonna see if I can find some information on our website about that for you, but wanted to let you know that that is an emerging technology that we're also keeping our eye on and piloting in the community. Yeah, and just for people who don't know what it is, it's basically using a heat pump to heat water, and that's used for both, you know, obviously water, uh, water heating purposes, but also used for space conditioning in like um, hydronic situations, or I think even potentially blowing hot, you know, blowing the air over the hot water to condition the home. Um, maybe a little bit off on that, but I, I think that's the general gist of it. I'll encourage everyone to keep 
putting your questions in the, the Q&A, but I do have a question uh, for Jeffrey since uh, you introduced a lot of different programs um, and different rebates. I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about what the Home Energy Advisor service is. Uh, I think you introduced that just right after you introduced the Home Energy Score uh, assessment rebate too. So if you could kind of provide the differences sure. between the programs. Yes. So our home energy advisors are you know, mostly for phone support. Um, so you don't know where to start. You know it's really hot yesterday. Uh, you know there's something you can do with your home. You just need to find some resources and figure out a good place to start. You know, call our energy advisors and they can ident you know, tell you, oh, there's this home intel program where you can you know, you know, get some free information. You can get directed to the home energy score assessors and um, for that one hour appointment to, to take a look at your home. Or you know, PCE has this program for uh, you know, if you meet the income qualifications and you can get all these uh, services. So they're there to be um, kind of your concierge uh, to direct you to the different programs. And so, you know, the energy assessor is one of those options where, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's a limit to what the advisor can do from his phone or his or her phone. And so having the assessor come out and actually walk through your home and point out, hey, this, your installation is actually at a R13 level. You can increase it to R39 and you can get, you know, a thousand bucks from uh, from Bay Ren. So that's kind of how they work together. Um, you know, we try to make our energy advisors aware of all the programs throughout the Bay Area. Um, so if it's financing, if it's, you know, just uh, even solar, uh, even, you know, like, you know, green house calls where people will send you out a kit to and walk you through these improvements. Um, they're there to kind of pull all these things together and give you some, some place to start. And also answer questions throughout your, um, you know, Home Plus process, like reviewing bids and, you know, is this, is this cost too high? Is it, you know, about right for what, for the area, all of that. Great, thank you. And I actually, I think I'll revisit one of the questions that had uh, popped up. So uh, also a question for Jeffrey. A lot of, my understanding is a lot of Bay Rens programs and rebates are structured uh, so that you're rebating a, a switch from an existing appliance, existing equipment to um, a more efficient type of equipment. Uh, and so what what is available, can you talk about what is available for new construction? Sure. Um, so I, I uh, there's a PG&E program called California Energy Smart Homes, and I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, and so this is support for new residential constructions as well as major alterations. So if you're planning to, you know, a, a pretty decent sized remodel, um, you know, because just this is you know a little bit about funding, but you know our program because it's funded out of energy efficiency, it needs to show, you know re one thing needs to replace another, um, and so there's different pots of funds, and so for these alterations and new construction, it comes out of a different pot of funds, and so um, they offer uh, I think guidance and um, and rebates for switching to all electric. And so I, I put the link in the web, in the chat, um, but yeah, this is available uh, statewide. Great, and um, I think you guys have touched on this a little bit, but maybe a little review. Uh, Nancy asks, are the um, Peninsula Clean Energy and Bay Run rebates coordinated? Yeah, many of our rebate programs, in particular, the heat pump water heater rebate that is in partnership with Bayron. And so we layer on some extra incentives and have our customers interested to go through the Bayron program. Yeah, I'll read it. And we, we we're trying to keep the, you know, you guys, the customer in mind and not have to 
go through several different programs. So we, you know, we're really thankful for PCE's partnerships so that, you know, when, when there is a new program, it's integrated so that you only have to fill it out once. And especially with our program, the contractors do all that paperwork for you. So all you have to do is choose a participating contractor. They get you the Bayon rebate, they get you the PCE rebate, and you know, you don't have to do any of that in the back. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is from Bart. We have an old gas clothes dryer. Is there an incentive to go electric? Yes, there is a $300 rebate for switching from gas to a heat pump clothes dryer, uh, which I didn't get too into because it's it's not as, <laughs> I guess there's not as much to explain. You just switch from one to another and the heat pump just dries the clothes. It does, I will say it, um, it does take a little longer from what I hear. I don't have one yet. I will be getting one. Um, but I also hear that the clothes are a lot softer because it's a little gentler process. But um, yeah, we have a rebate for that. Great, I think we're reaching the end of our questions. And does anyone else have any further questions? Great, well, seeing no further questions, uh, I guess I'll take this time to thank our, our presenters for sharing all this information. Uh, I think there was a lot covered this evening and as mentioned before the recording of this presentation uh, along with the powerpoint slides will be posted and if you have additional questions you can always reach out to myself i can uh, share my contact information in the chat and make sure that your question gets answered there's a lot of resources available clearly. So we hope that you take advantage um, uh, of these different rebates and resources available to uh, uh, consider going electric in your home. All right, sorry, I'm just sending my contact information. And with that, I'll just thank everyone for attending and have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.